Hi, this is the kid at Red Gaming Tech. Uh, you're actually joining me for the second attempt at recording this. Since the first time I recorded it, I forgot to turn my microphone on. So, it's now 20 past midnight on a Friday. I'm having a bev. I'm going to record it again. So, uh, I've had a scan of the comments on part one. And, oh no, I just forgot to show my Facebook stuff. I'm going to have to... Hi, this is the kid at Red Gaming Tech. Uh, you're actually going to be joining me for the second recording of this video since uh, the first time I recorded it I somehow forgot to turn my microphone on. Um, so it's now 20 past midnight and I'm recording this again. It's Friday night, I'm going to have a bev and just get, go through this with you. So uh, I've been monitoring the comments on part one, which I have lost somewhere, um, and there does seem to have been some interest and some good comments on it and things like that, so I'd wanted to address some of the things people have brought up. Uh, the first thing is the font size in Visual Studio, which I can increase and I will be increasing for future videos. Um, there's also been some feedback on things that I left out or that I could have described better. I actually responded to one guy here, that is actually my account. Um, so I'm going to go through a few things. So as was pointed out, I've just been watching <laughs> Monty Python, uh, I didn't actually show you where to get Visual Studio 2010 from. All you need to do is go to Google or your favorite search engine, learn how to spell, and then type in Visual Studio 2010 Express. Your first result will be visualstudio.com or near your first result. So you want visualstudio.com. You want to go to Downloads. Then you want to scroll down to Visual Studio 2010 Express and you want Visual C Sharp 2010 Express. I'm going to click on that, choose the appropriate language and then do install now and it will give you the installer for the program. Once you've got that installed you will find it in your start menu. No, yes you will find it in your start menu. It will be here. It might be under your all programs list. It depends how you've got it set up. I'm also having a cigarette, I know, naughty me. Um, so, on the left, this is to start a console application, which is a lot of the stuff I'm going to be doing these lessons in. Um, I'll probably dip into other kinds of projects. But regardless of what kind of project you're doing, you want to hit New Project. And this will give you your t the templates. Uh, these are the ones that come with uh, Visual Studio as default. The one we're working on is a console application. I'll talk about the rest uh, later. So, you want to give your application a name. I'm going to call this one lesson 1.5 oh, okay oh, <laughs> that's because I'm already recording it, I'll call it 1.6, it's because I've still got the project from when I first recorded this so I'll open up your new project, so as you can see I've increased the text size that things are displayed in so um, the first thing that has been addressed that I didn't cover maybe in the best way was um, the whole deal with declaring variables and what these operators in between are for. So what I was trying to get across was that an, a, a single equal symbol always indicates that, that this variable before it is equal to the value after it. So it assigns that value to that variable. If you're wanting to check whether something is equal to something or not, say in an if statement, you need to have a double equals. A double equals is checking the value assigned it's stored in this variable against this number. So it's it's seeing if that it's checking whether that vari variable's uh, value is equal to that. A single equals is saying this is equal to this. So you're assigning a value rather than checking the value. Some other things I didn't mention uh, operator-wise are incrementers and decrementers. Now what they are, say I have a variable that I'm calling a and it's equal to 1. What you can do is that you can use the increment operator, which is the double plus, and what that will do is increment the value of this variable by 1. Or you can use the decrement operator, which is a double minus, which is saying decrement that the value in that variable by one. You can increment and dec decrement by more than one with by just saying a. Oh, no, I don't want to build. You can incre increment by more by doing plus equals, say five. What that will do is increment the value in a by this value five. You can also 
only context in new expression can be used as a statement. Only assignment calling. I've done something wrong there, but I'll come back and fix that in a minute. Or you can decrement by another value using minus equals. A plus equals five semicolon. Okay, I don't know why I didn't like it the first time. That's just one of those things. It's still saying it doesn't like it. Let me build that. No, it's happy with it now. Okay, never mind. So those are how you increment and decrement va uh, values of variables. <laughs> the next thing that I was asked to mention is the meaning of the general structure of a program in C Sharp. So I'll talk you through that. So you'll notice at the top we've got all these using statements. What these are are calls to include external libraries in this project. So what a library is, is a pre-compiled piece of code that if you call if you use a using command within this program, you can call functions from those external libraries. Um, you obviously have to declare them to be able to call various functions from them. So the main ones we're using here are the system library and some subsets of it, things for outputting text. The system um, library is mostly for console applications. It's, it's a set of functions that allow you to output things, input things, and things like that, just to run a console application. So the main body of the program is all of this here. Now, it's, it kind of works in tiers. You have th things, you have a, se a series of kind of levels within your program. So the lowest level is this section. This is known as a function. Now, in any program in C Sharp, by default, the main function, which is declared with this line, will always be the entry point to the program. Now, what the entry point to a program means is that is the point that the code will start executing at runtime, runtime being when you're running the program. So, de by declaring your main function, you're basically telling the compiler this is where you start. This is the beginning. This is the first function that you run when the program starts. The class is a container that goes around a set of variables and functions. Now, what the re the idea behind a class is using a concept called object-oriented programming. Now, a class can contain variables and functions. The idea behind it is that once you create a class, you can then instantiate multiple instances of that class. So, in practice, you can think of it as a class being a description of a thing, its variables, and what it does. For example, you could have a class that describes a bird. So its variables would be things like the breed, its age, um, things like that, the colour of it maybe. Its functions would be things like flying, uh, sleeping, eating, things that it does. So what you can do once you've written that code is if you then want to create an object within your program that has very similar functions and, and variables but is maybe slightly different, you can declare the new... Sorry for the jump cut, I had a bit of a weird thing where the uh, <coughs> fraps just stopped recording for some reason. Luckily I noticed it. Um, anyway, coming back to this, so yeah, if you wanted to declare a an object that is very similar to this one but has some slightly different functions or variables, rather than writing a whole new set of code for it, you can do what's called instantiating it and declaring a class that inherits from this class. And what that does is that it essentially copies all the variables and functions of this class and pastes them into your new class. So you can use functions from a, a class's, an object's parent class, if you see what I mean. They can, it's called inheritance. Um, it's a way of saving on code and it's a way of saving on time. Um, and it's a lot, more, a lot simpler to work with than what's called a, a linear programming language where you're essentially just writing a list of instructions, it works through them and it's done. Um, it's quite a key thing in how most modern programs work. You could write them in linear code, but it would be very, very difficult and very, very inefficient. So that's the idea behind object-oriented programming. Now the final level, if you will, is called the, a namespace. And a namespace is a way of encapsulating um, a set of classes and functions and variables. It's like the, t the highest tier in the hierarchy. Um, you can work with various na different namespaces um, within a program, but you can while you're working in any given namespace, you can only 
use classes and functions and such from within the namespace you're currently using. So function uh, namespace lesson 1.6 contains contains this class and it contains this function. So if we were to now switch to a different namespace within our program, we wouldn't be able to call anything from this class because it's in a different namespace. It's what's called out of scope, which is something you may see a lot. It's quite a common error that pops up is something is out of scope. That is what that's telling you. So that's the basic structure of a program in C Sharp and C++ for the most part. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I needed to cover. I'm just going to have a quick look through the comments here. A lot of the comments were bigger text, which I think I've addressed. Just let me know if you think it's big enough now. Uh, he mentions, This guy mentions typecasting, Rob McCune. Um, I'm going to come to that later because that's something slightly more advanced. I probably shouldn't have mentioned it in the first video because we don't really need to worry about it too much yet. Um, I've talked about this. Uh, yes, uh, I think I've pretty much covered all the topics I wanted to. Um, so I just wanted to clarify on those kind of points and you know take you guys' feedback and let you know that I am listening and I'm going to be taking an interest in your feedback throughout this whole series. Um, so I think I will leave it there for this video. Expect lesson two within the next few days. Uh, I've set aside some time to record that very soon. Um, as for what that will be on, I haven't quite decided yet because I've got a few options for, for, for directions I can go in. Um, if anyone has any requests for things they'd like to me need to talk about in the next video, post it in the comments or post on our Facebook page. Just search Red Gaming Tech on Facebook. Um, alternative, do you have any additional comments or you know things you need help with? Same process, either comment on YouTube, post us a message on Facebook and I'll get back to you. Just start it with at the kid so I know that you're addressing me. Um, so I'm going to leave it there for today um, and call it a lesson. So thanks for watching. You, I, I have been, you haven't been, I have been the kid at Red Gaming Tech. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon.